Joining us now to break it down, as he has all night, the coach, Avery Johnson. Coach, impressive performance here from Jimmy Butler and the Heat. They do what you got to do. They hold home court. They take the first two games. Your reaction coming out of this one is what? What did you learn about either of these two teams? I learned that the Heat is the number one seed for all of the right reasons, Joe. You got to remember, you know, the, the Atlanta Hawks had to play in, you know, two games to make it to the, get to the eight seed. Uh, they're playing, obviously, without Clint Capella, their starting center. But the Heat look like a number one seed. They look like a team that knows exactly what they're doing. They were the more consistent team all year long, especially on both ends of the floor. There was a time in the season this year where we didn't even think the Atlanta Hawks would make it to the play-in because of their poor defensive play. They got off the slow start. Um, and, and they look like that type of a team in, in these first two games. So the Heat, they're who we thought they are. They're a very well-coached team. Uh, they, they are led by Jimmy Butler, you know, a guy that, could, you know, has first-team all-NBA type of talent. We know he's had some ups and downs, but the Heat are who we thought they would be. They protected their home court. They did exactly what they needed to do. They frustrated Trey Young, uh, especially in these first two games. He didn't score much in game one, and then he had 10 turnovers. How can a point guard have 10 turnovers in a playoff game? Unacceptable. So give the Heat credit, but also <laughs> the Atlanta Hawks, they got to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, a lot needs to change with the Hawks. We'll get to that in just a moment here, especially on that offensive end. As you put it, Coach, Miami's defense stifling here. We're going to be drawn to the numbers, the playoff career high by Butler in game two. But I found it interesting. Game one, sort of a team effort. Duncan Robinson takes the headline. Jimmy had a nice night but wasn't a stat stuffer the way he was here in game two. To be able to win games differently at this point in the season, does that tell you anything about this team, how ready the Heat are for life beyond just this series against Atlanta? Yeah, you're you're right. All of my really good teams, especially teams that made it deep in the playoffs and especially, you know, teams that have competed in the NBA Finals, you got to win differently. These games all take on a personality of their own. Lots of supporting cast, led, you know, Duncan Robinson in game one. But I know in the back of Jimmy Butler's mind, Hey, they're going to try to take away the supporting cast. They're going to try to force me to beat them. And Jimmy Butler decided to beat them <laughs> with a playoff career <laughs> high with those 45 points. So, And he did it from the free throw line. He was very efficient from the uh, three-point line. But he played 39 minutes and didn't have a turnover. Mm. So that says a lot about the disrespect that he had for the Atlanta Hawks defense. And he put the Miami Heat on his shoulders tonight and led them to victory. And everybody that's partying in South Beach tonight, they're going to probably have on a Jimmy Butler jersey because he was that good. <laughs> Rightfully so. 45 points, as you said, Coach. No turnovers. 15 to 25 from the field. Missed one free throw. A near-perfect night for Butler, who will try and take that sort of performance into Game 3, which is two days from now in Atlanta. That series shifting to the ATL coach, 2-0 Heat. Them having claimed both of these games on their home court. Nate McMillan gave the Hawks the night off a day ago. They needed rest, as you said, coming in, winning those two games just to get into the playoff field. What needs to change between now and Friday for the Hawks to make a series out of this thing? Well, two things. Number one, Trey Young's got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Some of those careless passes, some of those fancy passes, especially when he's in traffic, uh, ball security, whether you're talking about football or basketball, you got to take care of the ball. So he, with him being the head of the state, the engine in the car, take care of the basketball. Number two, they're going to have to get him off the ball a little bit. You know, too many times he's initiating mm. the offense. There was some success that they had tonight when, when he played off the ball, maybe came off some screens, catch, he shot it, caught it, made a quick move. But the times when the, he's bringing the ball across half court, running some sort of a middle pick and roll, they double or triple team him, he turned the ball over. Then at Miami gets out in transition. There was a point they were up 10 nothing in fast break points off a lot of off of Trey Young's uh, turnover. So get him off the ball a little bit. He's got to do a better job of protecting the ball because if he doesn't, then this is going to be rinse and repeat. 
and Atlanta's going and then Atlanta's going to lose game three to the Miami Heat, and they do not want to go down 0-3 in this series. Yeah, Ice Trey's going to have to heat it up, or it's going to be all heat as they take the 2-0 lead into game three down an ATL. Coach, we thank you as always. Taking a look at that series schedule, game three coming your way on Friday. We know it's going to be rocking in the A. A who's who courtside as always, but it comes down to one thing. The final score, and Atlanta's been on the wrong side of the first two of these. They'll look to make a series out of it on Friday, game four, Sunday, 7 Eastern. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.